Hi everyone, welcome to Q Baptist Church Online. If I am an unfamiliar face to you, my name is Emily and it's great to be joining with you tonight in your homes. I want to extend a really warm welcome to our 10 a.m. morning congregation and also our 5.30 p.m. night congregation. We are all joining together as God's people tonight as one community of faith in a combined service. Now, I'm not sure how you are coming to tonight's service. I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of an online service. It can be really quite disconnecting and hard to connect in with what God is doing. You may be thankful for a time of rest at the minute. You might be frustrated. You might be angry at cancelled or changed plans. But be encouraged. You are joining with more than 100 people tonight to worship Jesus and to grow in our understanding and knowledge of him together. So we are going to be led in song by Luke and Ange in a moment's time. But before we do that, I'm going to pray for us. So will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as one community of faith. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship you even in lockdown. We thank you, Lord, that you are still God in lockdowns, Lord. And we just pray that this would be a time of worship and praise together as one community. In your name, amen. Good evening, Q. Wherever you are, in your homes, <laughs> please stand. We'll, we'll stand together as a church across all of our homes, across all of, all of Melbourne. And uh, I encourage you to, to really push in. Um, as Emily said, sometimes it can feel really disconnected, but it doesn't necessarily have to feel disconnected. We're all here, we're meeting together. So let's sing. Uh, We're going to start by singing Psalm number three. I cry. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to, uh, to encourage our hearts tonight and to open them, to enlarge them, and to lift, lift our gaze, lift our sights outside of the, uh, the little bubble that we're in. Amen. Mario, I'm just going to keep you up Thanks, after. Thanks, Luke and Ange. If you have joined with us tonight, welcome to QBAPS Online. It's great to be with you gathering all together tonight. We are starting a new series tonight called Your Place in God's Plan. Over the next few months, we will be exploring the book of Ephesians, finding out how we fit into God's plan for our lives, church and world. And Amy Jelly, our wonderful Generations Pastor, will be kicking it off this week, looking at Ephesians 1, 1 to 14. We will hear from a few guest speakers over the coming weeks. Next week, we have the privilege of hearing from Bill Brown, and he works at the BUV and Sindel Baptist Church, so we have that to look forward to. The church gathering is happening this Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. There will be significant updates in regards to an interim pastor and other details for this transition time. Even if you aren't a member, it would be really lovely if you could join um, in on the meeting. We would also love to invite all the KBC men to our next men's event for 2021. Mike Rader will be speaking on money, sex, power, godly versus worldly use. So that's happening Friday, August the 13th, 7 p.m. at the hall. And you can register for that event over on the QBAPS website or using the link in the QBAPTIS Instagram bio. I'm now going to pray over our tithes and offerings, so please join me. Lord, we thank you for these finances coming out of our accounts this week. We thank you for those who so generously give towards your mission, Lord. And we pray that these finances will be used for the expansion of your kingdom on earth. We pray, Lord, that they will be used for your honour and glory. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Mari, who will pray for the world from her home. Hi, everybody. Thank it's good to join you tonight. I just want to um, have you join with me as we pray to our Heavenly Father and commit our lives, our world, our community to him. Let's pray. How blessed are you, God, and what a blessing you are. You're the Father of our Master, Jesus Christ, and you take us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before you laid down earth's foundations, you had us in mind and you settled on us as a focus of your love to be made whole and holy by your love. Long, long ago, you decided to adopt us into your family through Jesus because you wanted us to enter into the celebration of your love, lavish gift giving by your, the hand of your beloved son. And because of his sacrifice, we're a free people. And we're not just barely free, we're abundantly free because you thought of everything. You provided for everything we could possibly need and you set it all out before us in Jesus, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven and on planet Earth. And it's in Jesus that we find out who we are and what we're living for. And Jesus, we pray that today, tonight, this week, we will find in you who we are 
and what we're living for, that we will not be distracted by the things that are going on around us, but that we will find ourselves completely wrapped and embraced in you before us, behind us, around us and within us, and know that you are for us. Give us courage for each day, whether we're in lockdown or whether we are not. Lord God, give us courage for all the things we face. And may we always remember that if our heart is a cup, your love is an ocean and you can fill us and complete us and replenish us. As a church, Lord, we rejoice with the Repsy family as they welcome Oscar into their, into their family with Phoebe. And we just pray that your delight will be on that little boy and that he will grow into a man of God. We praise you and thank you for your gifts of new life. And we pray for those who need extra support, for people who are unwell and who are facing hard times, Lord. We particularly think of Isabel, Miriam's mum, and ask that you will lift her up, you'll comfort her heart, and you'll heal her body as she goes through the ravages of um, chemotherapy. Lord God, help her family to be what she needs, but most of all, may Jesus be all she needs. We think of our ministry and leadership teams and the church meeting on Tuesday about an interim pastor and the search committee. We ask that you will give them wisdom, you will give them patience, you will open their eyes to have initiative and imagination to see and hear and feel the touch of your hand as you guide them. And we think of our beloved Nick and Amanda as they finish packing up and to move to Adelaide and hopefully into a new ministry position and we ask that you will be all they need and open the way for them. We pray for our church family in this, that your kingdom will come and your will will be done. We think of the many people in Australia and around the world who are in lockdown. We realise that we're all in the same storm, but we occupy different vessels. Some vessels are big and ocean going and some people are barely clinging to a life raft or less than that. We particularly think of those and if we can support and help people, Lord, may we do so as much as we can. We think of the people of Malaysia who are totally struggling and we ask that where we can help, we will, and where we can support others, we will, but most of all that your strong right arm will protect those people and that you'll help them to be resourced as they need to be. And we remember to our overseas workers from Q Baptist. We think uh, of a few of them tonight. We think of Mike and Catherine in South Asia as they bring clean water and living water to their country. We pray for continued good relationships with national and local people in the government and um, particularly their application to extend the project for a further five years. We think of our dear Bree and in North Uganda working with children with disabilities and their families. Now they're in lockdown for a further two months and unable to contact so many of those families and we ask for wisdom to know how best to continue to support them through uh, phone calls and to comply with restrictions as much as they can. We know they're sending out care packages and may they be a blessing to these families who struggle. We also pray for them to have wisdom as they plan and budget uh, to resource a new mobility project to provide aids to the, enable children to access the world around them. We pray that your kingdom will come and your will will be done. And Lord Jesus, we particularly just pray that we will be your vessels, your people, the hands and feet and eyes and hearts and ears that you send into the world. May we be your people for your kingdom to come around us and for your will to be done through us. For Jesus' glory. Amen. Please stand with us and sing Amazing Grace.
Ephesians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, 
having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who was a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. And I just want to pray for uh, Amy's talk tonight, that it will reach our hearts, uh, fill our minds with new ideas and visions of God's glory and his plans for our lives. Um, I pray for every one of us in our homes, um, wherever we are, that we will receive your love tonight, Lord Jesus, um, through the message that Amy has lovingly and prayerfully prepared for us. Um, will you make um, yeah, us open to receive your word and, um, and to know more about you and to know more about ourselves in your glory, um, marked as we were before the beginning of time, uh, to live in a relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi church, I'm here speaking to you again from my lounge room. I hope you're all doing well and coming up with new ways to entertain yourself in lockdown 5.0. I'm hoping to see you in person really soon. Well tonight we're starting a new series, Your Place in God's Plan, based on the book of Ephesians. My hope is that as we go through these extremely rich chapters and verses, we would allow God to further open our hearts, stretch our understandings, and that we would experience a fresh revelation of his great love for us. Before we get into chapter one, let me give you some quick context about Ephesus and this letter that is written to the Ephesians. Just for a few minutes, let's dive into a bit of history. Stay with me and we'll just learn a bit about Ephesus before we open the text. Ephesus was one of the five major cities of the Roman Empire at the time this letter was written. It was the epicenter of most of the Greek and Roman gods and had an estimated population of 300,000. Today, it is known as modern day Turkey. Previous to this letter being written, Paul had been ministering in Ephesus for three years. He had gained many followers for Christ and he was quite close to the believers there. Around four years later, he was imprisoned by the Romans in Rome and he writes this letter. It is interesting to note that unlike other letters of Paul's, Ephesians is not written to counteract heresy or confront any specific problem. Ephesians is actually a letter of encouragement and Paul most likely wanted it to be circulated to all the churches in the area. He packs a lot into six chapters and generally you could break the book up into two sections. First of all, chapters one to three is where Paul is exploring the story of the gospel and what it means for us to be united with Christ. Chapters four to six is about how the gospel should affect every part of our life story and how we should live. Today, we're going to start by looking at chapter one and just the first half. And we're looking specifically at what it means to have every blessing in Christ. Thank you so much to Beth who read our Bible passage earlier. And if you have your Bible there, why don't you read verses three to seven with me? So reading from Ephesians one verses three to seven. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. I will spend some time in a minute looking specifically at verse three, where Paul states that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. 
But I want to first call out the elephant in the room and look at verses four and five, where Paul uses strong language like we were chosen and predestined. I'm calling this the elephant in the room because the debate or discussions around predestination and God's divine will for us versus our own free will is probably one of the most largely discussed theological disputes there is. I don't want to delve into this too deeply now as I think we could camp here for a long time and miss the point of what God is actually trying to tell us through the start of Paul's letter. But I will say that this topic doesn't need to be an elephant in the room scenario. And actually, I really love and admire many of you at Q Baptist who are willing and interested in tackling these somewhat deeper and perhaps trickier topics. So tonight, if that's you, if you have an interest in discussing this topic on predestination, then I encourage you to talk to your small group about it or connect with other believers and discuss this topic. Continue going back to the Bible and exploring what it's saying to you. Just don't get stuck there and miss all the other things that God wants to show you through his word. There are two points I do want to make from these two verses in four and five, though. And they are that firstly, God has always known us. We are not here by accident. Psalm 139 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. We were not an afterthought, but a planned and purposed part of his creation. Now I'm the youngest of four children. I have two older brothers and an older sister. They are all close in age. And then I was a huge surprise package 10 years later. And I grew up often making the comment that I was an accident. And people would look quite shocked and alarmed when I said this. I was surprised by their reactions as I actually wasn't at all upset about this as I had been told so much by my parents that I was so wanted and although it had been a surprise it was a well received one. My mum had actually had a stillborn baby boy who would have been three years older than me and so my entrance into the world actually brought a lot of healing to my family and hence why I didn't have any negative connotations with being an accident. As I've gotten older, I understand why being an accident can sound awful. My experience is not the experience of everyone. And there are many people in the world who have been told they were accidents and in the cruelest of ways. Church, I'm not sure what your experience is or what has been said over you or to you in your life. But let me tell you today that you are not an accident. God had you planned before the creation of the world. You were, as the psalmist wrote, woven together in the depths of the earth. Let that lie that the enemy has been telling you your whole life leave you tonight. You were planned and purposed by the creator himself. The second point I'd like to make from these verses is that they prove that we cannot earn our salvation. Verses four and five explains that he chose us to be united with Christ before the beginning of the world. This shows that we cannot do anything to earn our right standing with God. Salvation is completely dependent on Jesus and what he has already done on the cross. It is not dependent on our behavior. He chose us before we even had a chance to prove ourselves. Many of you know that I'm 32 weeks pregnant and honestly, I'm grateful to be sitting as I speak to you today. Now you would all think I was crazy and somewhat Uh, it would be somewhat disturbing if I said something like, I'm not sure if I'll love this baby or not. I'm waiting to see what she's like before I make up my mind if I will love her. I'll see how well she sleeps, how cute she is, how quickly she learns to crawl, and then I'll make my choice whether I accept her as my own. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? 
Yet so often we can find ourselves believing the lie that we need to do certain things to gain God's approval. Be better Christians, try harder, love more, sin less, the list goes on. I have not even met this baby yet and I already love her. There is nothing she can do once she is born that will change my love for her because she is my child. These verses in Ephesians show us that God sees us the same. In fact, verse 5 says that he had already planned to adopt us as his children even before he created the world. In Roman law at the time, Paul wrote this letter, adopted children had the same rights and privileges as biological children, even if they had been slaves. The Greek word for adoption to sonship is a legal term referring to the full legal standing of an adopted heir in Roman culture. By being adopted by God, it means that we get to share all the benefits of his inheritance. Matthew, 30, uh, sorry, Matthew 25, 34 says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So, you are not an accident, but planned even before creation. And... You cannot do anything to earn God's love or salvation. You have been adopted as a child of God in accordance with his pleasure and will. Let's now go back to verse 3 where Paul says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. What are these spiritual blessings that Paul is talking about? Are they the fruits of the spirit, spiritual gifts, perhaps their promises for a happy life? What does he mean? The last two words in this verse are the most important. In Christ. In Christ. We have all the benefits of knowing God. The next 11 verses from verse 3 to 14 in chapter 1, tell us what that means. It means being chosen for salvation, being adopted as his children. It's forgiveness, allowing us to be holy and blameless in his sight. The gifts of the Spirit, power to do God's will, supernatural insight, the hope of living forever with Christ. And because of our relationship and union with Christ, we can enjoy these blessings now. As we go through our daily lives, we don't often always feel so blessed. We are far too often focused on our circumstances. We get worn down by physical ailments, financial stress, broken or challenging relationships, anxiety, the weight of another lockdown, the list could go on. Unfortunately, we spend too much time and energy allowing these earthly struggles to diminish overshadow and overwhelm these amazing spiritual blessings that God has given us through our union with Christ. These blessings are not manufactured or material. They come from the heavenly realms, meaning they are eternal. They will not fade. The phrase heavenly realm is actually mentioned five times throughout the six chapters in the book of Ephesians. Paul is trying to make a point here. Stop looking just at our circumstances and what we experience and feel and look to the supernatural. I love what Colossians 3, 1 to 4 says. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I wonder if anyone has ever been lucky enough to stay at an amazing resort before. If you have, you will remember that these accommodation epicenters don't just provide you with a room and a bed to sleep in. They usually offer all manner of luxury, amazing facilities and entertainment on offer, buffet breakfasts, swimming pools, gyms, high-end toiletries. 
I won't ask now who likes to take the little shampoos and conditioners home with you, but I'm sure some of you at home right now are looking a little bit guilty. <clears throat> Mark Jelly. <clears throat> but in all seriousness, the fact that you are a member or a patron at that resort means that you get access to all the incredible things on offer. It would be really strange if someone who was a member at one of these places never made the most of its benefits. They just used it for its functionality. Perhaps as it is a good place to sleep and a safe place or a safe space to park their car. Perhaps they're so preoccupied with other things in their life that their affiliation with the resort is purely that they are a member, yet they don't actually enjoy the privileges of their membership. What missed opportunities and wasted blessings they would experience. Now, I'm definitely not trying to say that our relationship with Jesus is like being a member at an amazing resort, as it is far better than that. But I want to provoke our thinking tonight about how we view the spiritual blessings that God has for us through Christ. What are we missing out on? What are we not accessing? Because again, there is nothing we can do to earn these blessings. It has already been done. They have already been given to us when we accepted Christ into our lives. At that moment, we were immediately given all spiritual blessings in him. I know when I have been lucky enough to stay at a really nice resort, the other thing that happens is I always tell everyone about it and how good it was. When I get home, I tell them about the amazing things I experienced and I encourage them to go and stay there also. If we are purely in a relationship with Jesus for the comfort of knowing we are a member of heaven, but not actually enjoying all the blessings he has given us, then we are unlikely to tell anyone about this relationship that we have with him. So how do we respond to these blessings that Paul talks about? Well, Paul suggests that praise is our response to this amazing gesture by God. Our response shouldn't be guilt, shame, iniquity or unworthiness, but praise. Why praise? Because it takes the focus off us and onto him. We so often feel unworthy because we are looking inwardly and not looking towards God. Through these verses in Ephesians, Paul goes back to giving praise to God continually. If we have a look again at verses uh, 3 to 14, he says, praise in verse 3, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then again in verse 6, to the praise of his glorious grace. Verse 12, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And verse 14, until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Our response is simple, to praise him. When we praise Jesus for all that he has done and turn our eyes to him, we become more in tune with who we are in union with him. And this is actually the last big theme I want to discuss from these 14 verses in Ephesians. What this passage says about our identity in Christ. You know, church, we are living in a time where there is so much confusion around identity. And I believe the enemy enjoys it when your circumstances become hard or challenging and you may lose a little faith. But I believe he absolutely loves it when you start questioning your identity, when you become confused and you forget who you are as a son or a daughter of God. Maybe this is how you feel tonight, like you have forgotten what it means to be a child of God. You've forgotten that your identity is not found in your career, in your relationship status, in your uni grades, in your Instagram likes. As a follower of Christ, your identity is found completely in him and with the promise of every spiritual blessing. Let me remind you of who you are in Christ tonight. You are accepted. You are a child of God. You are Christ's friend. You're a member of the body of Christ. You are a saint. You are redeemed, complete, secure, free from condemnation. You are not able to be separated from the love of God. You are anointed and sealed by God. You are a citizen of heaven. You don't have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You are significant. You're the salt and light of the earth. 
God's workmanship, God's co-worker. You're seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. I could go on. These aren't just nice words that I've made up to make you feel good. This is what God says about you, and they are all recorded throughout the Bible. I urge you tonight to ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that stops you from believing who God made you to be? What is your default setting? Is it fear, anger, sadness, distraction, complacency? When things get tough, what stops you from remembering who you are in Christ and someone who is in possession of every spiritual blessing? What is your default setting? I want to finish by saying that none of these promises are available or true if we don't know Christ. Verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood. In all honesty, speaking of Jesus' blood can be somewhat alarming for us. It sounds quite barbaric that Jesus' blood had to be shed for us. And the truth is, it was barbaric. He died in the cruelest and most inhumane way, yet his sacrifice was completely necessary. In the first century, shedding blood as a sacrifice for one's sins was a common practice. In the Old Testament times, forgiveness was granted on the basis of shedding of animals' blood. Now we are forgiven once and for all by the shedding of Jesus' blood, the perfect sacrifice. What we need to remember is that Jesus has already done this for us. He's already done this for you and for I. No one can change that. It doesn't matter how good or bad you've been in the past. It is up to you to decide if you will accept Jesus' great sacrifice and live united with him and receive every spiritual blessing. If tonight you are hearing this for the first time and want to make the decision to accept Jesus into your own life, then I am celebrating with you right now as this will be the single most important and best decision you'll ever make. Maybe you're watching this um, from home and you're watching with someone who knows God, then I encourage you to chat with them about this decision. You're only one short prayer away from living forever with our Lord. You can pray something like this. It can be really simple. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. If you do pray this prayer tonight, please get in touch with us so we can support you on this amazing journey. Church, we cannot save ourselves. Many people will spend their whole lives trying. But the truth is that once we acknowledge that this is not possible and that only God can save us, then we will truly live. Through faith in Christ, we get to receive his love and favour and we get to enjoy every spiritual blessing. As we go tonight, just remember, this series on Ephesians is called Your Place in God's Plan. It's not God's place in your plan. Let me finish by praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus who died so that we might know you, so that we might have a relationship with you and get to experience every spiritual blessing. Lord, speak to us tonight about our default settings, Lord. What is it that we go to when things are hard, when life is challenging, Lord? Help us to go to you, Lord. Help us to remember who we are in you, Jesus. Remind us each morning as we wake that we are a child of God. And Lord, I pray for anyone tonight who is feeling really um, stressed about this, Lord, or maybe feeling a bit anxious about what I've spoken on, would you speak to their hearts right now, Lord? Would you remind them of how loved they are, that they were planned before creation, they were purposed for this earth, and that you want to know them, Lord? Thank you so much for your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for that sermon, Amy. Um, just want to echo what Amy said about the, the journey of following Jesus, uh, about it being a great journey. 
it's the best journey. <laughs> it's the best journey that you can take. Uh, so if you're thinking about it, I encourage you to think about it seriously. Let's stand and sing Nothing But The Blood. your creation. Thank you that we are woven together in the depths of the earth by you, God. You chose us to be united with Christ. You wanted us, God. Thank you that we don't have to do anything to earn your approval. We have been adopted as your children. Thank you for sending Jesus, Father. Thank you for creating a way for us to enjoy a union with your Son. God, give us a desire to long for a deeper union with Christ, who is our life. Help us to fix our eyes on you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, Amy. What an encouraging way to end, to start, sorry, the new series. If you want to know more about Jesus or chat to someone about something you heard tonight, or if you are really struggling, please contact the church. You can do this through the church website. Well, this concludes our service tonight. We will see you next week. Take care, church. <laughs>